So tell me a little bit about the history of Alamany Farms. So Alamany Farm originated out of uh, a desire by myself and some other friends to learn how to grow food and teach other people the same skills. We were looking for a space uh, to do that and this place became obviously the, the first choice when we realized that no one was doing anything here and there was all the infrastructure already available to start growing food. So uh, we just started in 2005 and talked to people in the community and to see what, what the interest was for the people who live closest to the farm, what would they like to see happen at the farm, and um, at the same time starting to grow food and, and just and do it and invite anyone to come and, and show up and participate. Yeah. And so who's your typical worker here? these volunteers? And well, I mean, it varies because we have different programs. So, I mean, the volunteer program that we have on the weekends uh, primarily is younger, educated. We get a lot of college students, people who are in environmental studies classes, people who are hearing about these, you know, food issues and topics and interested to get hands-on work around that. Um, but they vary as far as, you know, class, race, age, gender. I mean, it's definitely across the board. There. Then we also have, you know, the youth who are in the, the, the youth program who are 12 to 18 years old live in that many housing. So that's a different work demographic. Um, and then we have a lot of school groups come and visit, and they often do work as well. And they, you know, the amount of work they do to actually grow the food might be less than what our volunteers do, but they definitely are a part of the of the program. And what happens to the food when it's harvested? Right? So the, the food mainly gets distributed uh, on the work days. We do a collective harvest at the end of the day and then distribute it to the volunteers, uh, as well as we sell at the Baby Farmers Market, uh, which is a low-income uh, neighborhood, and we, we're there as a service to people who can't otherwise afford organic food, so we sell everything super cheap. So, you know, a do almost everything's a dollar. You know, organic tomatoes instead of $6 a pound or $2 a pound. So. Uh, we're trying to make these foods more accessible, so we sell it there. We have a food distribution program for, the, for some seniors in the Alameda community. So every Friday they get um, whatever they order. So they say, oh, you have this and this, this available. I want one thing of collards, two heads of lettuce, and carrots, and we'll deliver that to them. So those are the main uh, places that our food goes. And so you have this land here. Is there any uh, plans to expand? or? I think, I mean, we've got potential for expansion here itself. We have plenty of work that we can be doing to grow more food here. Uh, it's mostly a capacity issue because we're almost all unpaid staff. Uh, so because we're trying to do multiple things at once, we're trying to do environmental education and job training and have a thriving volunteer base, it's kind of uh, always a challenge to, to find out to find new managers and figure out how to manage all this energy and, in, and input that's being that's coming into the project and use it to better grow food. So we still have a ways to go as far as managing this land. I don't think we're interested in expanding to other places. But really what we'd like to do is create more urban farmers. We'd like to create more people who are empowered to actually feel like, hey, I know what I'm doing enough to go start another community garden or grow in my backyard or teach other people how to do it and just kind of keep that rolling so that we just expand the skill base and, and have people who aren't so dependent on the industrial food system. So education is a big part of it. It's, I think, the central motivation of it. I mean, because it's education on multiple levels. There's education with schools and youth, you know, or they're learning just basics of what, what, what ecology is or how the how the natural world works, and then there's people who, you know, they've been to college, they already know that, now here's the more nitty gritty of, well, what does this variety of collards do versus this other variety, or how do we, you know, plant things together to make them grow the best, you know, so it's, there's more complexity in food growing, you know, it's, it's a simple thing, but it, the more you learn, the more you realize that there's endless amounts of knowledge to know about uh, how to grow food, and it's really complex, actually. Have you had any success stories, like people who've worked here that you know have gone on to be farmers or have aspirations to do that now? Well, I mean, we're only the, in our third, or wait, our fourth growing season. Um, but as far as, we have had uh, different volunteers who have got, come to the farm and then gone on to be organizing for other sorts of food justice efforts. So uh, a woman named Deborah, she went on to work with a group called Poder in the Mission, and she's working on creating more CSA programs with 
uh, Latino farmers to connect them to the Latino community in the city. So there's one example, uh, there's a guy named John who actually went on and now he's just doing a lot of farming in, in Northern California. So people, you know, have different motivations. Some people just want to get into the uh, the plant side of food growing and some people want to get into the people side of food growing and we're open to, to both sides really.